Hey guys, so this is just a quick video to let you know that I'm not able to edit a video this week because I am working like a crazy woman to get ready to do my driving lessons. We start on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. So anybody on the New River, watch out. I'll be driving this beast. Yes, of course the captain will be standing next to me. So anyway. So a couple things I wanted to talk about because these have been questions that have been asked a lot. First off, insurance. How am I, as a first time boat owner, able to get insurance and able to drive my own boat, especially a boat this size? I got incredibly lucky that a broker that I looked at a boat in Maryland gave me the number to this lady, Tammy, and I will put her information below. Uh, she was able to get me a policy where I am a named operator but I have to have supervision for the first 50 hours with a captain and they have to sign off on my proficiency. So thus the driving lessons. And um, it's probably a little more expensive because I'm a first time boat owner, but it's worth it. I'll be able to drive my own boat, captain my own boat. What, what do you call it? Operate your own boat? It's a lot of conjecture about this. Uh, and um, anyways, she's a great lady very very kind and so I highly recommend her and you can get her information below and give her a call if you are still having a hard time getting insurance on your boat. So a lot of people have been asking me about dockage in South Florida and that's a little tricky because you're not allowed to live on your boat in in most places unless you're in a live aboard approved marina. There are still a few uh, private docks on apartment complexes in Los Olas. Um, I don't know quite how that works, uh, but they are slowly disappearing because they are tearing down the older buildings and putting up new buildings and they're not allowing the liveaboards there anymore. So that's not going to last more than a few years. And um, I went the route of a private dock because I need to work on my boat. I am here from sunup to sundown, often till 11 o'clock at night working cleaning, sorting, making lists, editing videos, and just everything. Kind of stinks. I, I don't understand. Uh, according to the Florida state law, I'm not a liveaboard. I own a home. 90% of my stuff is at my home. Uh, but the city of Fort Lauderdale says no more than 10 days. So I usually spend the weekends here and then I go and stay at a place very close by. It's just literally like I can see the boat from the window and um, I do have some amenities I get power I get water I have my own garbage cans at the last place uh, Jim had to haul the garbage away for me so I do have at least my own garbage cans here and I don't really need internet because I use Ladybug Wireless which is uh, my service my company and it works really great. Um, I'm very pleased with the new 5G device that we just added to our lineup. That's what I use. It's the Peplink uh, Cat 20 uh, with 5G. I think it's called the Pro Peplink Max Pro. Wow, I should really know this. Anyways, I'll put a link to that in the bottom too. Uh, I use it on T-Mobile and Verizon here. at and kind of, kind of, meh. Although Carl said up on the flybridge, it worked really well on his tablet. So I may take the device up and test AT&T up on the flybridge. But down here in the salon, T-Mobile is the best. Verizon is a close second. Get about a hundred megabits down. Um, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. It depends on the time of day. And then about eh, eight to 15 back up, which is fine. I can do everything I need to do on that. And the best part about it is I take it with me. So when the move boat moves, my equipment goes with me, it works. As long as I'm within range of a cell phone tower, I have service. So also through Ladybug, I have a service that works in 140 countries. So I'll be taking one of those devices on the boat as well. And then I will probably throw on a Starlink device for when I'm out in the middle of the water because sadly, cell phone signal does not work so well out in the middle of the water. Quick progress report. I know you guys are kind of frustrated that the videos are running months behind. 
and I'm really sorry about that. I didn't plan on doing the channel. Uh, I started working on the boat in June. I posted the first video in September, just the walkthrough for my friends, and then so many people watched it and commented, and so I decided to go ahead and start posting, and that was in October. So I was already four months behind when I started posting. And, you know, when you take on a project this big, there's no before and after. There's no instant gratification. It, it's like you dig into a problem and it sits there like an open wound for weeks or months while you work the problem and figure out how to fix it or you try to find somebody to figure out how to fix it or you got the parts you can't get the parts or you know just so everybody's like why don't you post more before and after well I don't have any after <laughs> I am just now what is this end of March middle March end of March something like that I don't know just now starting to get some after so I will start posting some after but because the project was so huge and there was so much to do and Jim is great don't get me wrong but he was really great at starting something and then saying I don't want to do it and leaving me with this gaping you know wound in my boat for me to find somebody else to come and fix uh, so you know I just decided to do chronological so that you can feel the chaos and the frustration and the headache and the oh my god is this ever going to get done because honestly even right now we're we're taking off on Saturday even right now I still walk through the boat and I feel like am I really gonna be ready by Saturday I mean there's so much crap everywhere so um, I am really sorry that the videos are so far behind, but a quick rundown on where I am. Engines are done. Engine room floors have been repaired, uh, and the engine rooms are getting cleaned and painted. The last toilet pump went in today, so I now have four, yes, four, 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 four working heads. So everybody can pee. <laughs> They all go into the tank like they're supposed to um, and I've got the solenoids to make them fresh water flush and the plumbing is there but we have not had a chance to put them in but I'm not gonna even mess with that until after the driving lessons this Saturday is like all that matters this week all this week has only been focused on getting the last few things that I need to do to get off the dock get the windlass in get the water pump in the the generator although I, I have another generator so we could have run without that but I got the water pump in I got all the toilets and the bathrooms up and working so everybody will be comfortable I got um, we tested all the electronics I do have a working depth finder I do have working AIS uh, we'll be using Navionics or Navionics however you say that for the navigation stuff um, I do have autopilot, the bow thruster is working, the stabilizers are working, uh, the steering up top is working, the steering down below always worked, but it's working a little better. And um, what else? Running lights are working. Uh, just a lot of things like that that I've been working really hard to make her safe and sound and just cleaning. I pulled up almost every piece of floor uh, from the master to the uh, pretty much to the midship. I mean, I did the VIP cabin. I've done both engine rooms and the master. The floor was water damaged, so I pulled that up. And we've been cleaning bilges. Um, no more water in the forward bilge. No more water in the starboard bilge. Um, little water in the port side because the AC drains in there. Um, I got a, I got a, hey, I can give a, a shout out to Seaflow right now because Seaflow sent me a care package recently with two DC water pumps, one to use and one as a spare. So we'll be getting that installed next week and a blower fan for the engine room, which is 24 volts. So I've got to figure out how to step down from 32 to 24 to make that work. And my very favorite, a dry bilge pump. Big thank you to Seaflow for that. And uh, we'll have some real videos uh, as I put the stuff in that they sent. And gosh, 
so much has been done on this boat system wise i am i want to say 80 percent of the way done with the system maybe even 85 the only thing that i absolutely have to fix left is the ac system i got stuck i had a AC company come in January they were super excited about partnering and we had all these plans and then crickets nothing they just disappeared and so I finally you know hunted them down and said what's going on oh we're still interested we're still interested we're gonna send somebody this week and then the morning they're supposed to come I get a text message $200 an hour and I'm like that's not what we talked about. So I'm back to looking for a reasonable AC person to come. Um, but some of the fun things I've done, I replaced receptacles and the ones that are all above like the waist have in all, in all the cabins have USB-C and USB-A ports. I am putting in smart Wi-Fi dimmers so you can tell Alexa, please turn out the lights. Um, all kinds of fun little stuff like that. I'm really going to smarten this old broad up. I'm pretty excited about that. And it's a little early because I still need to do the headliner in the salon. But I bought furniture. <laughs> I bought a beautiful set of Bernhardt furniture. It's timeless. It's elegant. It has a heavy duck fabric so it will wear really well. And uh, you'll get to see that in a few days. Oh, I got to talk about the conundrum. How do I fix this? So on the windlass, we got it in. We have it installed. I have the up working, which is the most important part. I understand. But mine is also supposed to go down. So I've got up and I've got down. And it's the craziest thing if we put the power to the up terminal and click the switch, it works. If we click the other switch that is not connected to the power yet, the solenoid clicks. And then I click this. If we take the power off and put it on the other terminal and click the switch, it works. And if we click the up switch um, that doesn't have power right now, the solenoid will click. I can take the other power lead and do the same thing. But if I put the power to the up and the down terminal like they're supposed to be and then click one of the switches, it trips the breaker. So I am posting these pictures of the solenoid box. If anybody can see anything wrong, please comment um, or email boats 4 Shay the number four. So boats the number four Shay at gmail.com. I'll put that in the description as well. Um, and of course, if you just have a pretty boat and you want to send me pictures of a pretty boat, I'm always good with that. Uh, I know I'm forgetting something. Anyways, I'll put all the links that we talked about down below. The insurance, the internet, uh, the Seaflow stuff that they sent me so you can check it out. And wish me luck on Saturday. Oh, that was it. If things are going well, Saturday and Sunday we're going to be doing local, you know, the river, ICW, maneuvering, docking, that kind of stuff. If that all goes well, then Monday we are going to go down uh, maybe to Miami or even the Keys or maybe up to Lake Sylvie and anchor out overnight. Once we drop anchor and everything is settled down, I might sneak in a little live time. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. If I do, it'll be about 8 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, but uh, I can't make any promises because I don't know what's going to happen. In, during those few days but if, if things are going well I will definitely 
pop in for a visit and thanks again you guys for all the support the encouragement the funny comments the wonderful information oh rusty Mwah, rusty uh, he's a one of the first viewers who actually we met through Sam's Marine their forum and um, I had found these beautiful glasses at Home Goods, but they were too short, and I went to every Home Goods in town and couldn't find the last two. And he found them and sent them to me. So thank you, thank you, Rusty. I really appreciate it. And actually, I want to send out another big thank you to Mark Messenschlager from Mr. Bob, the award winning Christmas parade boat. Um, he also runs a, a little marina called Riverfront and um, a boat share program and he's going to kill me because I can't remember the name now uh, but I'll put the link to that too. This is my neighbor here and he has been a godsend of information. If I don't have a tool he's got it. Just wonderful. Him and his family they invited me to, to come for Thanksgiving. Uh, they're just really, really, really wonderful, super, super people. So uh, big love to Mark and Rita and his family. And anyways, so now I'm really going to say goodnight.